That I remember. How much does summer camp cost? $255 You know how much this cost? Fourteen dollars. <laughs> it was a lot of money back then. That's right. Because what did houses cost in those days? Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah. And what would that cost today? Maybe Probably two hundred. Ten times that. Or yeah. something yeah. close to that. Yeah. yeah. And also back then, you couldn't get a snowball for less than a penny. Yeah. So. Daddy, yeah. I didn't go on the 52-mile hike, but I remember the 52-mile hike. How do you remember it? Do you remember the 52-mile bridge? 52-mile bridge? Do you remember the 52-mile bridge? I've never heard of it. Is you, there one? <laughs> do, you, do you remember what happened as you all left to go on the, on the trip? No. You don't remember the flat tire? Tell me some more. I, that's all I remember is that the, you were you were on your way out of town. You were going south on Highway 75, and your truck or your trailer, I don't know which, uh, had a flat tire. Could be. And from then on, it became known as the 52-mile bridge because that's where it that happened. That part I remember, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Well, somebody somewhere has a, a bunch of photos of this trip, of this hike, all made in the form of a of a talk, Hang which on. I heard one time, but I don't know who has those stills. Uh, they would be valuable for someone, whoever it has it, to dig them up and show them for the troop. Do you know who Jim McKee is? Sure. No. Do you know who Jim McKee is? This says he takes pictures for the record, but I don't know who that is either. No, the, the Roland, McKees, is that somebody you remember? The McKees are another family that you can see in the history there. There were McKees in every generation. Oh, okay. <coughs> are they still in here? Well, I wonder if they're still in here. Well, <laughs> there were the Pam McGee was my age, but uh, that's obviously not Scout. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Jim was probably her dad. I'm not sure. I remember. The Jim, because uh, that wasn't a name I remembered. Yeah, but. He's in the in that early history. In the they're, in the early the early history. The fifty-two mile bridge must be a bridge on Highway seventy-five. Yeah. Okay. It's between be town and Richardson Ranch. Because that bridge and the flat tire, I guess, is pictured in these photos that I mentioned yeah. to you. And one of the guys, one of the men, was crouched getting out of the car uh, onto the truck to see about it. And his rear, end, his rear end stuck up, and that, that was in the photo, not he, just his bottom. Just his rear end. So that led to we a lot of laughter. Who it is. Yeah. Um, are the names of the leaders given? Yeah. Martin, Martin Eccleston was the scoutmaster. Yeah. Steve Logue was the senior patrol leader. Andy Canale was the assistant senior <coughs> patrol leader. Jim, oh, Jim McKee was a youth. He's, a, been, yeah. he's the assistant SPL. I was assuming he was an adult. Um, yeah, I don't see that? names of anybody else. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, Jim Carroll was the trail coordinator. Yeah. Uh, Joe Marcou was yep. the assistant scoutmaster. Right. Lou Bearer was assistant scoutmaster. Mm -hmm. Dick Mangelkamp was chairman, I guess committee chairman. Mangelkamp was the guy. Whose bottom is in the picture? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and it says parent contact is Bill Logue, John Jones, and Al Rolletter. I don't know if that means that Al he went. Rolletter. Did they? Did he go? Al. Ro Al Rolletter. Did he go? He must have been there. Yeah. He might have gone. He he was at summer camp a lot. Now and then it does that. tell who the youth leadership he is. He used to fly the American flag from his. Guy there yeah, the that's theater. right. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, can I share while you're? Yeah, thinking? yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, my dad says that the mosquitoes were the big threat. I don't remember mosquitoes at all. I remember the heat. I remember the humidity. But I will tell you that the biggest challenge of all were ticks. Because yes. There were hundreds. Millions. Hundreds of ticks. What I mean by that is we had. 20 boys or so, and everybody had 20 ticks or so crawling up Ooh. all the time. 
-hmm. The first day, on the first day of the hike, mm -hmm. we were just covered with them, and they seemed to be crawling from the trees and crawling up from the ground. And every time you'd look, you'd have three or four or a half dozen crawling up you and get them off. And it was a pain. We had to stop several times and have tick checks. And, and then the whole day we were plagued with them. And uh, so we got to the first stop. It was on top of a mountain where it was, uh, there was a beautiful view and it was a little cooler up there with the breeze. But I think that's one thing that made it hot and humid too because a lot of times we'd be spending on the side of mountains going down into the valleys where there was no breeze. And finally, when you got up to the campsite on the top of the mountain, it was very nice. And there was a, because there was a ranger tower up there. I remember that we got to go up the ranger tower for a while. And, but the ranger saved our life because he had the cure for the ticks. Garlic. Which well, was he called what? it cottonseed powder. Cottonseed powder? I don't know what it was. I think it was something like diatomaceous earth or something. Mm -hmm. But it was a white powder that you could you know, sprinkle all over your pants, particularly, because that's where they seem to be crawling up. So everybody put this white powder all over their, their pants, and we never had any more trouble. So there might have been a few, you know, one or two. I did he give you a supply that then he lasted? He used it every day. Every day? He gave, he gave us a supply, and uh, so we used it every day and had no more trouble with that. We did still have the heat. And et cetera, and, but I, I do remember too that we, um, we had ch challenges. Some of us filled our canteens with water at the campsite and then used, them, used the water sparingly. So we never really ran out. That was one of those. Some people needed water and so then of course we had to use uh, uh, tablets to uh, make the water potable that we would find in wells or along the way because you never knew what you were going to be getting. Was it iodine that they used then to treat the water? Do you remember? I don't no. think it was iodine. Alizone had it. Maybe so. Which probably is iodine. Oh, it is? Okay. So it is probably. Another thing I remember, go ahead and ask your question. It's um, for Mr. Bear. Okay. Daddy, right here. <coughs> Just wave your hand. Okay, go ahead. Did you um, make Eagle Scout? Are you an Eagle Scout? Yes. Do you remember when you made Eagle Scout? Ooh. No. <laughs> that was not here, but back in Pennsylvania from where I come, oh, near Pittsburgh. But I want to... And his brother was one, too. He was? And his brother was a scoutmaster <coughs> of yeah. another Troop 5. You you mean <laughs> Cubby? Oh, Cubby, yeah. yes, Cubby. Yes. It was Braddock 5. Yeah. Uh, um, Rob Freeze has a question in the back, Daddy. Well, before I forget it, okay. uh, on the ticks, we yeah. had... Everybody at nighttime yeah. before we went to bed yeah. uh, stripped down yeah. and we had tick search right. to pick them off and kill them. Yeah, now I can. Rob? I just have a question. Um, you know, for some of the hiking trails that these young men go through now, now are, pretty, are pretty well made. Yeah. You know, uh, as compared to many decades ago when that, when you all went on this one, <laughs> how was the trail? Was it pretty well? Established or what? Or were you looking, having to search for the best way to get through? Well, the trees were marked. I think. Were they? Okay. Yeah, the trees were marked, but the the pathway was not well worn. Okay. Yeah, the trail was not a pathway. Right. The trail was not. The trail itself was not visible. The trees. We went from mark to mark to mark. We had to find our way through the weeds and the trees. So, but directionally, you knew direction. Yeah. You just didn't know. Oh, the trees. Yeah. Yeah, more or less, you knew direction, yeah. Okay. Way back in the back. Hang um, on. How old were you uh, guys when that we went on that 50 mile hike? Well, see, that was 62. 1962. You said, how so old were then you? I was uh, thir 13. Right? I don't know. I can't do that math. So you were, about, <laughs> so you were basically around my age. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've probably been in scouts two years. I was quartermaster of the troop. I don't know what my you rank was there. Well, it might have been star. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just guessing it might have been a star. Two <coughs> years before you got eagle. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, our, our neighbor, George Hayes, lived across the street. Right. Yeah, you were 13. <coughs> when he heard we were going on this 50-mile hike on the Kaimichi Trail, he began to fill me up with stories 
of all the hazards, and the two that I remember were the feral hogs, pigs, Arkansas pigs, which were really horrendous, and the second one was the bootleggers. Uh, I don't know what we call them. Okay. But, so I was looking for uh, these, uh, these victims or uh, these people. A and what's a bootlegger? Huh? They may not know what a bootlegger is. What's a bootlegger? Makes, makes list whiskey uh, unlicensed, uh, which in most states, probably all states, is, is illegal for his own consumption or for sale if he can find a buyer. Also known as moonshine? Moonshine. Moonshine, have you heard yeah. that one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another question over here. I have a question about the chip powder. What did the guy say it was? Cotton seed powder. <laughs> and I looked it up in Wikipedia and it is a herbicide. Oh, is there such a thing? Uh huh. Oh, well. You're saying this anti <laughs> this anti tick stuff was Cotton seed. Cotton seed powder, uh -huh. and it is listed as a herbicide. We were oh, desperate, oh. I'll tell you. We didn't inquire too much, and we were so grateful that he gave it to us. I, I don't know if you can still get it, but we couldn't it see was a herbicide. By, by four more days working like that. Yeah. And after that, yeah. it was much, okay. much better. In the way back. Okay. Did you all have any, uh, any interesting wildlife stories? Uh, maybe, you know, wildlife you experienced while you were there? Did you all see any wildlife? I don't remember any. I don't remember that. No, I, me too. I, I, you know, there must have been, but I don't remember that. I, I do remember two, <laughs> other, two, two other experiences on it, but, uh, you know, after three days of this hiking in the heat, we finally came to the Kaimichi River, and uh, that's a uh, very clear, fast-flowing, but rapids type, but very cool. So we all plunged in there and had a nice swim. Mm. That was fantastic. And suddenly things started to work out. <laughs> and we, of course, by that time we were way over halfway. And so that was invigorating. And then I think we finished, we actually finished a day early because we decided to have a night hike the last day. Oh, yeah. And pushed right through to get to Camp Pioneer. Let me. So that's fun walking at night. Um, you know, it's cooler, you can see the stars. But without the scenery, it did seem to be longer. And, you were, and you're tired anyway, and so you walked a long way. So, hmm, it had pros and cons. <laughs> that, okay. that last day of walking, that night time, yeah. was dangerous too because yeah. we, we were walking along a dark road yes. and there there was traffic on the road. You mean vehicles? Cars? Vehicles, yeah. So there were automobiles. The we got out of the mountain, or at the park, because Camp Pioneer is kind of in the hills, too. But for some reason, he's right. We were walking on a road. Mm -hmm. But but I remember I remember that last day very, very well, hmm. because I had a case of diarrhea, I guess, yeah. uh, food poisoning, and I had to stop frequently along the roadside and <laughs> take care of myself. <laughs> and it was it was terribly painful. Oh. And embarrassing. And but it was also a relief. Dehydration, I bet you. What? I bet you it was dehydration. Oh not, maybe so. Not food well, yeah. we got to Camp Pioneer. I remember that because we also hear the con of the night night. We arrived in the dark. So we didn't really see it. But I might and and at least for me, once I went to sleep, we lit the tents up and hit the sack. <laughs> I was out, <clears throat> and I really didn't wake up until it was almost, I think, lunchtime. We were called to the mess hall. We're gonna have lunch and then go home. And I do remember though that Camp Pioneer just didn't exist. It was gorgeous, and so I wish that I had been up. I know it was, even though it was summertime. The grass was green and lush and cool, and oh, it was very nice. Yeah. Nice facility. Uh, yeah, well, you had a question. Yeah. What kind of merit badges did you guys have at the time? Do you remember any of the merit badges you got as a youth? Mm. Uh, well, I got 21 to become an eagle. <laughs> yeah. 
You you have your merit badge sash, Bobby. Which, yeah, I'm what sure. Did you, what I'm do you sure. remember getting? I'm sure the ones we had, you had 